What's up everyone, how are you doing? In this video, we'll learn more about the model behind Cartoonify. You know, the model that is responsible of applying these styles directly on the images. We'll understand how this model works, how it has been trained and the architecture behind. And then we will use some Python code with PyTorch to test this model locally before deploying a Lambda function on AWS. So let's do this. The model behind Cartoonify is called Cartoon GAN, and as you can say, there is GAN in it. And GAN stands for Generative Adversarial Network. If you're not familiar with GANs, these are special types of networks that are trained in unsupervised fashion, and their goal is to understand the inner structure of the data and create fake samples out of it. A GAN is composed basically of two networks, a generator and a discriminator. The goal of the generator is to take some input data or input noise and create fake samples, and the goal of the discriminator, on the other hand, is to learn a boundary between the fake data and the real data. These two networks are trained in competition against each other in a min-max game inspired from game theory, where the generator tries to fool the discriminator, and the discriminator tries to be better and better at identifying fake data out of real data. At the beginning of the training, the generator and the discriminator are very bad in their respective tasks. And once the training goes on, they get better and better. And when we reach an equilibrium, the generator creates very good samples that make the discriminator very confused. And in that case, we can throw the discriminator away, take the generator and apply it on our generation task. Now, if you want to frame this architecture to our style transformation, which is taking real images and converting them to cartoons, we can say and consider that the input data to our generator would be the set of photographs that we take from our phones or cameras, and the set of real-world images that we want our transformation to map to is the set of cartoons that we can gather from the internet. And basically, this setup is very interesting because we don't need one-to-one -one mapping between the real photographs and the cartoon data, because this would be very tedious to construct and not practical at all. Let's now have a look at the architecture behind these two models. The generator and the discriminator are very deep and use a lot of convolutions. This is normal because we are dealing with networks that handle images. Well, for the generator, uh, the input is the image, this image gets then propagated through convolutions, normalization, and real layers until at some point this information gets upsampled using upconvolution layers. And finally, the result is an image that has the same shape as the input image. Basically, this network will produce the styled image. Regarding the discriminator network, this is simply a classifier. It gets an image as input, then this image gets propagated through the same layers. And at some point, this information goes through fully connected layer and finally classification layer. So now you may wonder, what is it that it makes Cartoon Gun very efficient at generating cartoon data that are very aesthetically pleasing? Well, to do this, the authors introduced two losses in addition to the original losses of Gun. So the first loss is a semantic loss, and basically this loss forces the generator when generating a styled image in preserving the content of the original image. So basically, when the style operation is done, we want it to be done only superficially without degrading the content of the image. The second loss is introduced to match some specific details that we see in general in cartoon data. When you look at cartoon data in general, you will notice that it has low details in comparison with original images, less textures, and it has also smooth edges and low shaded colors. And that's what we want, right? So this has been introduced in this second loss. Now, if you guys are interested in this paper, uh, in the training procedure or the training pipeline or the mathematical concepts behind this model, you can have a look at this paper. It's a very nice read, and I will post the link in the description of this video. Now, let's do some code with Python and PyTorch to test this model locally on some image data. I won't go into the training procedure. I will only get the pre-trained model, and then we will build a simple script that will take an image and convert it to the given result. 
and in a later video we will ship this script inside the lambda function so that it gets deployed on AWS. We have to clone this uh, repo then go inside folder and run the script which will download the pre-trained weights. So let's do this. I have already cloned this repo and downloaded the pre-trained weight, so I won't do this again. I also created a notebooks folder and inside this notebook we will test our script. So now we will build the test from code script that will get an image and convert it into a specific style using a simple function. We will later embed this function into AWS serverless lambda. So let's now build it first. Um, okay, so we'll start by, so let's start by importing some packages. I import numpy. I then import image from peel. Yep. Then I import torch. Torch vision transforms as transforms. Then I'll import variable from torch autograd import variable. Then I'll import the structure of the model basically from network transformer import transformer. This is imported from the original code in this GitHub and basically transformer is the class of the architecture of our model that will convert the image to a targeted style. So this will be basically the generator. Now I will design a function that's called transform. It gets basically five parameters. The first one is models. It will be a dictionary with preloaded models and each model can be accessed by its key and the key will be basically the style name of the model. So style will be the second argument. Then the input is the path to the input image. And then I will define load size, which will be initialized to 450. And basically this will be the maximum height or width to which we will resize our image in order to speed up the inference. I will specify GPU to minus one because we don't have a GPU right now, but we can apply the script if we have GPUs as well. So first of all, we'll start by loading the model by calling its specific style. If we have a GPU, we pass the model to CUDA. Otherwise, we just convert it to float, calling the float method. Now we have to open the image. So it's input image. So it's image.open input and then we'll have to convert it to RGB RGB and then we'll have to get the uh, height and width of this image by calling the size. Now we want to reshape this image so we will compute the ratio between height and width so it's basically height times 1.0 to make it in float divided by W and then if the ratio is higher than 1 so we keep the height to low size and then the width is the integer of height times 1.0 divided by the ratio otherwise we will put width equal to load size and then height will be the integer part of width times the ratio. Okay, so now we'll have to resize our image. It's basically very simple. 
we call the resize method. We will specify the height and width, and then we'll specify an interpolation method, which is a bicubic, basically. All right, so now let's convert this image to an MPI array. So NP as array of input image. Now we'll have to convert our image from RGB to BGR. So basically we'll do this by transposing the axis. Input image, input image. We keep the first two and then we transpose the first last axis like this. And then we'll have to convert our image to a tensor. So we'll put this, so we will do this by using transforms transforms to tensor and then we'll call our input image and then we'll unsqueeze this and get the first element because we are getting a batch and then we pre-process the values to get values between minus one and one because this is the processing of the paper so basically this is a simple translation input image equal minus one plus two times input image okay so now if I have a GPU so if GPU higher than minus one we convert the input image into a variable And we pass it to CUDA. Otherwise, we just convert it to a variable and call the float method. Now comes the most interesting part of this code. We will transform our input image to a styled one. And basically for this, we will simply do an inference of the image. So I'm gonna time this operation. So I will call with torch no grad and then I will call my model directly on the image so I will create output image equal model input image and basically when I call this I have a batch so I'm gonna take the first element out of it and then print the inference time. So I will say that inference time took time dot time minus t0 seconds. Yes, perfect. Now we're done. And basically what we have to do now is to get back to the original space and original pre-processing and uh, return the result to the user. Okay, so basically I have a small typo here and it should be good. Um, now I have to go back to RGB and basically this is very simple. So output RGB dot I keep, I transpose the axis. Then I deprocess to go back to uh, values between 0 and 1. So output image is output image dot data dot CPU. I convert it to float. I multiply it by 0 0.5 and add 0 0.5 to get back to the original interval values. Then I will convert my output image to an NumPy array by calling the NumPy method and then I will convert my output image to a unint8 format and then uh, pass it to a pill image and return the result as pill image and basically that's it. Okay, so let's do it. Output image is NumPy uint8 
8 output image and then I will transpose it transpose it 1 2 0 and then I will multiply by 255 to get values between 0 and 255 and then convert this numpy array to an image a peel image so image from array output image and then finally return the output image this is basically the full operation that we'll have to do and now to test it we will run a Jupyter notebook and call this function so let's do it I prepared the notebook and I imported all the needed packages uh, I will start by loading the four different styles provided by the paper and then I will keep them inside a uh, dictionary which I called models so let's do this okay let me now grab a picture of uh, my laptop and then I will call my method using uh, a load size of 300 and let's see so uh, now it's running it took two seconds and this is the result now we can choose another load size just to see the difference and how uh, the results uh, is shown so let's do it so it took 4 uh, seconds 40, 45 and the result is way better if we increase the result for example to 600 just to see how it looks we can do it as well and we will see that it takes uh, more time to run but basically the result is better and we can show it yeah I just should have named output 6, 650 but it's alright okay 12 seconds yeah basically the result is way better but it's uh, longer to uh, get there is, may, there is uh, actually a trade-off to take between the wall time that we target and the load size but in general we get better results for this if you use GPU because the computation is parallelized Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. In next video, we'll see how to ship all this code inside a Lambda function so that we can open an API endpoint to the world and our application can be targeted outside and then called from a front-end interface. Thank you for watching again and see you in the next video.